literally yes. going live right now. So we were, uh, if I could have just been a few seconds, a few seconds earlier. So this is me. <laughs> hey, everybody. Welcome to the Moon Day Show. I'm Scott Moon. I'm here with Walt and Josh. And we are going to talk yeah. about crazy stuff. Uh, basically, we're going to talk about uh, writing and being happy as a writer and, 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 you know, why we do this stuff. But mostly we're going to talk about my complete and utter mental breakdowns with I, with technology, and see Josh is has, is long accustomed to me having problems. Walt's like, oh my god, he's like a giant human baby. And he's <laughs> I, did, I did not say that. I know where you yeah. keep your taser. I know what you're thinking. So, so I look a little bit ghost like today because I'm actually in the sun, which is weird. So, uh, a twinkly that's, vampire. Yeah. Said no so, writer ever. So that's my, the, out, out my basement window. So it's like it's very scenic. It's not bad. I wish I was out on the deck. Maybe I should go on the deck next time. We can look Ooh. at it. So our, our house is quite a nice view. This is our basement in general. I'm kind of jealous because you've got sunlight right now. I can see Walt has sunlight right now. All I have is the Avengers and a whole bunch of lights. Yeah. <laughs> yeah but isn't that enough? I'll Maybe. give you that. I'll give you that. It's probably your office, enough. your office looks solid. So, um, so, uh, I think it's just get rolling. You know, what have you guys been doing lately? What's, uh, what's your Monday like today? Anyone? Uh, right now, Mondays are my favorite days because Mondays are the days that I have babysitting and I can get stuff done Mondays and Wednesdays. Um, so those are my favorite days. Um, today, this is the first thing I had going on this morning. I, I made some, uh, fried egg and cheese sandwiches on oh, so good. toasted buttered English muffins, and they were fantastic. Uh, and now, uh, after we do this, I'm going to work on 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 20 22 chapters that I have to finish, finish proofing <laughs> <laughs> to turn in. I did turn in the first, I turned in the first 30,000 words to uh, the editor last week i can't remember even which day it all runs together and now i'm just fixing fixing the back half it, it, it talking about having fun as a writer having fun as a writer is going back to the first section of your book knowing that you have all these chapters lined out to get to this part and you look at those chapters and there's no words in those yeah. chapters at all valor of doom valor of doom dude this valor of doom is this is exactly what it is man awesome it's like the never-ending story uh, see, I should get on Facebook. Who's uh, who's Facebook user today? Since I'm on StreamYard, that would be me. Okay, awesome. So, <laughs> I I was uh, so since since my Mac was giving me problems and they guided me. Josh patiently showed me how to use a PC like at like the last second, like literally the last second. And so for me to to stand where I'm not like doing the the big the big nasal shot the whole time. <laughs> I have to stand like in a karate stance. I'm like I'm like half squatting, looking down his nose at people. I know, I even am. on the webcam, it's horrible. So anyway, um, I don't know. I totally interrupt you. I'm so scatterbrained this morning and whatnot. But talking about, you told me that story a few times before about going back through your projects and finding blank chapters. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's not. It's not fun, um, but it they it made it easier to to continue because I knew exactly what needed to go in those chapters. And so I just sat down and, and wrote it, came up with some really cool uh, ideas to um, weave the investigation plot point of this book in a lot better than it had been in my head. So I, it all worked out. I think the book's going to be good. Uh, I'm ready to get it finished and move on to other projects, but I think it's going to be good. Sweet. But you all, what are you up to this morning? Hmm. Uh, rocking and rolling between sleep and broadcasting because <laughs> I, uh, I do that night thing. Uh, so work nights. Yeah, yeah, I do work nights. So, um, you know, I see the sun and it's, and it's like, ah, so, I mean, <laughs> <laughs> So, oh my God. Uh, but my wife has been very patient with me. Um, I'm, I, I woke up like, like, and, and there wasn't a pillow over my face and there was fresh coffee made and oh, it was wow. amazing. My wife is very, very good to me. Um, but uh, I've been working in between uh, 19 different projects because <laughs> uh, I don't want to be that guy that, that dies with a single regret. Um, and uh 
uh it's 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 been busy but it's been good very very good how about you scott what are you working on other than um trying desperately not to grab a hammer i'm thinking about becoming a pirate right now <laughs> yes <laughs> my my eye i have is my eye i'm crying out of this eye from from earlier but anyway i was just like anyway, yeah no when you're talking about your 19 projects and Josh talking about the 19 chapters, when he was telling his story, I have one, two, three for his count. And I'm like, those are probably the number of projects he's working on. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm, I made a spreadsheet of all my projects this morning uh, or updated it actually. And I, I, that's kind of, I kind of feel in the same way. I don't want to have any regrets. Like I had a story idea that should obviously be a novel. You know, Actually, I'm only working on one project right now, and I'm focusing 100% on that project, and then when I get it done, then I'll be fine. Which is smart. your poster collection on the wall. It's yeah, I actually, I need, I need space for two more. I've got to rearrange. I've got, if you look over this way, I've got some Terra Nova posters that are huge ones that I got because those are the first book posters ever made. And then I quickly realized that the posters were too big because, because I was like, ah, I'm never is not going to write two books. And so, <laughs> so now when I have like all these dozens of posters back here, they're the smaller size. So I've got to re redo the originals. Sweet. As giant sized or smaller? Small, 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 small. I might have to go to like six by nine by the time it's all said and done. <laughs> I mean, yeah. I I'll mean, if you there. go, if you go really big, you could like take a picture and of you in like Captain Morgan pose in front of them mm -hmm. and True. then get that blown up. It would be right. amazing. It's a, like a, a, a picture, a, a picture of a wall art of a wall art. Yes. Yeah. A wall of glory. So uh, I'm all about one thing that I forgot to do of the many things when you guys are keep walking me into my technologies, I forgot to do my overlay because I have, a, I made a video intro. Oh, let's watch it. Yeah. Let's do uh, it now. Can, can, you, can I, can I do that? Yeah, How do I do that? You're in charge. You can do anything. I, I don't, I don't even know. So it's just, just it. so it's it just plus. So I hit the plus thing. And you said unhide? Except I didn't hear any sound. I heard it. You heard sound? Yes, it was amazing. Yeah. The it's cat attacking me. The, uh, hear any sound? What the hell? Let's try it again. Here. I heard it. It was great. Listen, listen right, Josh. Okay, that was, that, that was my bad. That I heard the sound that time, but okay. it's it's because I have StreamYard coming through my headphones, but my PC was set to a different sound out, so I had to go uh, and switch it around. I don't even know what you're talking about. Okay? <laughs> <laughs> completely confused. No, I made a much longer video of it, and so I I like your guys' intro so much that last week I was looking on, so I just bought a couple of uh, video clips and some sound and threw them together but i learned how to do the auto fade so instead of trying to like manually do it there's a like little um thing you can drag over there and it does like a exponential fade so that would make it a lot easier save me like 15 hours of work because you know how i am with technology. <laughs> anyway. no look i'm impressed you didn't call me one time when you were making that yeah I, I had no idea you were doing it so that's it's a step in the right direction I'm, i was trying to because i know you're trying to finish the the endless uh, book of valor <laughs> 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 yes yesterday i had a book bub for enemy of man and it so, looked like it was wildly successful it's pretty it's pretty cool so talking about being being happy as a writer so obviously there's lots of components one of them is seeing your stuff sell and so that was kind of neat that's a book that i published in 2014 i actually originally published it in 2013 i believe but at the time the marketing geniuses said that you needed to re basically relaunch it, republish it from scratch like every year to keep it fresh. And so I did that a couple of times and it was a big hassle. And then I realized that, that probably doesn't actually really do anything for you. But so if you look at Enemy of Man, it says it's published 2014, but it's not right. But anyway, so it's, it's nice basically 51. Yeah, no. And so that's the thing that I find interesting is I've always considered it a dead book. Uh, 
commercially wise because they say, well, only only the 30 day cliff. You love this, Josh. Only the 30 day cliff matters. Brand, only brand new books matter. Lies. Yeah. And and we talk about that. And so that book has been out for a long time. I've probably given away 5,000 free copies of it over the course of the, of the book, at least, you know, um, done lots of 99 cent sales on it and things. And so you get one book bub and I think I sold 1200 copies yesterday and, um, like maybe a hundred so far today. And then I sold, um, some decent copies of the rest of the trilogy. So I don't think it's going to change much in my writing career, but it's nice to see something, get a breath of life. Back yeah. In. So my advice is everybody go get a book, Bob, because they're nice. <laughs> right. The, uh, and I got a book bub on Bain at Dawn like two months ago and it did good too. And, it, and it's a book that I, I really, I started writing when we did the, um, a lot of collaborations when we were starting with Richard Fox, Josh and I. Yep. And so I kind of let that, I kind of put that whole project on the side burner. It was supposed to be six books. And I just finally I ended it at three. I never did anything with it. I didn't promote it well. I didn't do any um, audiobooks for it or, or try to. And I just never really thought much of it. And then I did the book bub and then it sold. But then all the other books in that trilogy sold for a little bit too. So that was neat. So I, I guess what I'm saying is there is a way to get those things going. I just don't always, it's not always easy to figure it out. Most of the marketing gurus in indie publishing, I don't think know half what they think they know. So. Already. Well, they, they do, but like, it's not the only way it's yeah. not the, there's lots of ways. So, yeah. um, so that's what I, when it was, as far as and the reason I went into that long diatribe was we we're talking about what we were doing this week. So that was obviously a big focus, but mostly I've been writing, I've been writing on my eighth on series and, um, kind of on the side doing a little bit of my own stuff. So still, still just writing away. I, so this last week I finished, um, uh, 13 mercenaries and I'm most of the way through my, my final pre-editor proofread that I do. And I use the, um, speechify to read it back to me while I watch and, and listen and read at the same time. That helps me one. It keeps me from wandering my attention from wandering. Cause if I just read a document when I'm proofreading, I get bored and I start skipping. Well, it kind of controls the pace. It's a pace setter. So I do that. Um, then I've been outlining and working on the third book a little bit as I go. And then I've been working and then I finished my alien invasion book read through and start working on a second book on that. But, so busy, just lots of writing. And for me, always having something to write is probably one of the key things for being happy as a writer. So when, when I, I decided where I was going to, the topic for this moon day show was um, how to become a happy writer or the art of being a happy writer, I think is what I put in the, in the title thing. And so maybe we should go around the room and talk about a couple of critical elements. And I'll, I'll throw out that first one is always having a project that you want to write. Always having a good project that, that intrigues you or pulls you forward is probably step one. Thoughts? And you don't have to go with that. You can go with anything you want. I just thought this is, this is a topic I think is really important because a lot of people are jumping into the writing field without really understanding it because – you know, something they've always wanted to do, or maybe they think it'll be easy, easy way to make money, which, you know, spoiler alert, that's not true. <laughs> um, and whatnot. So, um, so, uh, so what, what was the specific question again? Oh, just, just let's identify like maybe three to five elements that are, are required to be a happy, happy as a writer. Oh, happy as a writer. Okay. My first, my first one is to be a happy writer. You need to have a project that you want to do. Sounds 100%. Dumb. 100%. Yeah. If you don't like what you're writing, then well, first of all, there's no point, right? Cause like you said, the, the have earning a shit ton of money in writing is not a guaranteed. And it's also not the main, it's not the norm, right? Even uh, traditional publishers don't, or traditional writers don't make a lot of money unless you're scalzy and get like a multi-million dollar contract or something like that. Um, so if you're for most of us, um i think it's all part-time work right it's all on the side it's in our spare time so if we're not doing something we love or want to do then why the hell do it um yeah. i mean that's point number one um i think uh finding finding a process that works for you instead of struggling the way that other um 
other people do it to try to, to emulate them or to try to, to think that's the way to do it. Like whether you're a pantser or a plotter or you're a hybrid of the two or whatever. Um, like for me, um, and this really ties into what I've been struggling with in this last Valor book is um, I, yeah, and you know me, Scott, I'm a plotter all the way. And uh, you betcha. I, I will sit down and plot a book out for a week and a half to two weeks. And I know the book backwards and forwards and I can just sit down and write it. Well, that didn't happen with this book. I had an idea with what I wanted to do. And I was like, I've got some time. I'll write it. And then I got, a month in and I didn't have shit. And I had two or three months in. I still didn't have shit. And um, I was struggling a lot. And then the other day, uh, for whatever reason, I just decided go back to the way that you do it. And I found a legal pad and I just sat and wrote out on this legal pad. Even as this, even as I was writing scenes, I was writing on this legal pad. I, I sh actually shifted my entire desk over so that I could have my legal pad down by my mouse and could write on it while I was typing and the amount of progress that I have made in writing in the last two weeks has been leaps and bounds what I've done over the last six months. It's crazy. Absolutely so, crazy. So, you know, knowing, so I guess that's, that's a critical thing knowing that that is something that's, that's all I always remember you um, when we used to have our meetups and stuff, you always had your notebook and you'd be like writing it. So, so why, why do you think what pulled you away from that? Cause that was working. Uh, honestly, I, I think, um, I had for the, this pre-order has really screwed with me mentally. A lot of people know that. And, and so did the one with the second book too. And I'm, I'm, I'm never ever going to do a pre-order again before the book is done. It's just not going to happen. Uh, right. once the book is done and it's in editing and we can send it, uh, put a pre-order date for sales and stuff. I'm cool with that. But the, the pre-order for some reason, it gave me like writer paralysis and I would sit down and I'd look at the screen and I say to myself, you have to type words right now. You're on a deadline. And that froze me. I couldn't do it. And uh, for whatever reason, I thought I, I don't have time to sit with the legal pad and write it out. I need to be sitting at the computer typing words out. I don't have time to do anything else. In reality, I did have plenty of time. And I should have just sat down for a couple of weeks and got away from the computer and outlined it the way I normally do. And I didn't. And I... Um, uh, that put me way behind. So uh, like, like being happy as a writer, I was happy again in the last couple of weeks. Well, in the last four months, I had not been happy at all writing at all. But then when I figured out that it's because I wasn't doing it the way I should have been doing it in the first place, once I figured that out mentally, I was like, well, I could sit in here and do, I've been standing up till one o'clock in the morning working. Cause it's, it's, every, it's fun. Every time I've talked to you over the last two weeks, you seem like a happier person. Yeah. Maybe that subconsciously is what's what's got me into the into this this thing because because I know your passion for writing and for storytelling and I know your abilities and we break down these stories and I was I think I was telling Nathan or Samantha that I was like Josh has such an amazing uh, grasp and able to articulate the, the story stuff you know and then but and so I just I, I know it's a I, I know it's important to you and I, and I and seeing you get back to that and start hammering again has been has been awesome so yeah. it's good stuff so we should talk more about our our, our ways what about you Walt? well what's something that you think is a fundamentally important aspect of being happy as a writer um although it might not start that way i think uh one of the things that i, I i've seen over many different careers um is when you have that click moment and not necessarily a Thanos snap where everybody disappears, although that would make a lot of people happy. Um, <laughs> but that moment where you, where you, where something you've been working at and giving you trouble um, manages to manifest in your head so that um, it, not that it becomes easy, but it becomes pleasurable. It becomes something that you, you actually have uh, some sort of skill at. Um, I know uh, for myself in writing, um, is very difficult for me because English is not my first language. So, um, and even like when I speak, um, years and years of uh, being in the military and having to give classes and having to talk to people, train people, um, 
I used to watch my grandfather, who was also a military man, used the United States Army to gain his citizenship. And it was often difficult for him to stand in front of people and, and, and speak with a very pronounced accent. And he would tell all his kids and all his grandkids, listen, if you want to be taken seriously in America, speak well. Mm-hmm. Um, so, so we went through class. I'm sorry? Can I ask what your first language is? Because I, uh, I would have never guessed. Uh, Italian. Italian. Awesome. So, like, yeah, my family. Uh, that, that's 100% cooler than. <laughs> my uh, my mother's side of the family is from uh, Catania, Sicily, in Italy. Um, so um, the uh, um, uh, you know just seeing seeing how much trouble he had, and then going the other way. Um, you know when uh, um, I'm writing my second, uh, I'm in the middle of uh, uh, editing my second book and working on my third book in a series, um, and I got the. Um, I got the second manuscript back uh, the other week and uh, you know, you go through from the editor and you, you know, you're seeing kind of what your technical glitches are and stuff like that. Um, but right smack dab in the middle, I mean, you know, you got this laundry list of things that you you know, you have to fix, but right smack dab in the middle was something I had never, ever gotten from an editor. And that was a compliment Oh, weird. Like, in, nice. in written form. Like, uh, and the compliment was on a scene where the scene transitions from point of view, and and I had set up the scene kind of like a um, like a relay race. Mm. Two characters start the scene, one character leaves, the remaining character picks up the point of view, and carries the incoming character until he leaves, and blah blah blah. So, and this happens three times during the scene. And normally, what the editor said in the comment was it it's not normally done that way, but it worked for the scene and how it was constructed. And I was like, I didn't see. Any of any of that? All I saw was that thing, and I'm like, "Yes, I am awesome." <laughs> and you know, oh, highlight the whole manuscript again. <laughs> yes. Select all, except all edits. Good right, but it wasn't. It wasn't so much that I had just gotten that one scene right. It was the fact that the that even even the language in that scene was was technically on point. Uh, so grammar, spelling, so forth, and so on. So at at some point during that scene and writing that scene there was enough technical ability that came through through um, all the stuff I had learned from uh, guys on keystroke medium stuff in all the classes I've been taking stuff. I mean, all that stuff kind of coalesced and made that one, not perfect, but better scene. And to be able to con- to conquer that level of technical proficiency in just a small, uh, in just a small, even a small piece was like, you know, you go to climb a mountain, it, even if you've slid a little bit, it doesn't matter because you're still conquering one step at a time. Every time you drive that ax into the ice and you're pulling yourself up a little bit more, that just, I mean, that's, that's a feeling of accomplishment that you cannot get in many other fields because some of these fields take years and years and years and years and years and you never get, uh, you, you'll never reach a place where you feel comfortable, but to have that, that one incident where you're like, ha, it's in writing. Nailed it. Yeah. Yep. yeah. So yeah, I think I think uh, finding a uh, finding a goal, reaching for a goal, and it, even attaining some piece of it uh, is is necessary for a semblance of happiness as far as uh, writing goes. It's so like that progress towards a worthy goal. Uh, Absolutely. <laughs> uh, Devin Ford in the chat was like, "Walt needs to give a give a TED talk." <laughs> he did. He's, He's even got the little like the, the lip mic that they have when they walk <laughs> around stage, and now all you just need to do is walk around and hold your hands out. No, like we can't do that right now because uh, my leg is still massively messed up. So oh. it needs- <laughs> Walt, I still Walt talk. Yeah, because they, they have like a little like rug in the middle of the stage generally, to, like kind of. You ever seen them? You ever watched where they kind of where they walk? So you can just sit there on your chair. Well, just do the house, get the cane and do the house walk where you're like limping on one and walking on the other. Or I'll we'll, just ride my I just ride my dog. There you True. go. I say we'll, we'll get we'll get a bunch of us and we'll carry you on a platform around. There you go. <laughs> He's so awesome. huge. We just got like an extra five thousand views because <laughs> we should probably just all get our dogs and put our dogs on the camera and then just talk like like they're talking and probably have a probably be very successful. You know, I, I recently saw one of the funniest movies I, I've seen in a while, even though it was absolutely morose humor. Um, it's called The Voices and it stars Ryan Reynolds acting as a serial killer. <laughs> and he talks to his cat and dog and the 
and they talk back and the cat is the funniest ever and he's like you should kill them all. <laughs> of, course, of course, that's what the cat would say. You know, if cats were people, they would all be serial killers. But I killed eight canaries today. What'd you do? <laughs> have you guys what? ever read? Um, I, I know you've. Some of you have read Jim Butcher, the um, the Dresden Files, but the Cinder Spire uh, series that he's written. There's only one book in it. I can't remember what it's called right now. Oh, the uh, the Aeronauts Windlass. Oh yeah. Um, the cats. Oh, the cats in that story are crazy. They're like, they are. If you've ever thought about writing cats as an intelligent fictional character, but trying to get their essence correct, he nailed it in that story because they're like, they're uppity and they're got, they have attitudes. They're very sarcastic and they think humans are dumb. And it's like, it's the coolest, like, like crazy fantasy talking cat thing ever. My when I was in college, I had a roommate that had two cats and a dog, and and the cat was named very creatively Black and White Kitty, because apparently <laughs> when <laughs> and he hadn't didn't have a name for it, and it just kind of stuck. But when I and I had known it because we we lived in like this threeplex old house, and then eventually I lived like in a different with different roommates, but then I moved into that one, you know, because save a shit ton of money. And uh, when I changed roommates, and when I moved in, his cat brought me half a squirrel. <laughs> so nice and i come in and it's it's on my pillow it's like welcome to the house yeah. please like, tell me you have that frame somewhere oh i wish i wish i did back, back, <laughs> that was back when you had to like use like 35 millimeter rolls of was back when you had to hold the flash powder up and don't yeah. move for 30 yeah. seconds yeah it's gonna be good so anyway and so <laughs> having animals is probably also a cr critical part of being a happy writer see how i dra 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 <laughs> dragged us right back dra in <laughs> And stuff like that. But I'm trying make to think sure. Of, uh, oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. I'm trying to think of something else. Um, I mean, it, writing it is um, as a whole sometimes it's not very fun like the 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 initial the idea is really fun like oh this is a super great idea and you're writing it down uh and then of course you always get to the middle slog and that's not fun um but it's necessary and then you get to the ending and that's fun so i, I think that you gotta be uh, willing to do the un unhappy it's like like uh if you're really into fitness like yeah like well in martial arts and jujitsu there's parts of that that are less fun than others yeah like when you're getting your ass kicked on a regular basis <laughs> yeah you have a broken foot you've yeah. got a clipped wing yeah. <laughs> but then but then you but then one day you like do a move that you didn't know you could do and and you have that like immense satisfaction and it makes it all it makes the last six months worth of writings the same way um and so i one of the things that i've come to uh find very valuable one of my breakthroughs this year for writing and being happy as a writer is to value the actual work itself and the mm -hmm. more i can enjoy the not so fun parts and so um i remember i had an officer i work with and he came to work one time and he said i come to work and I, he said it real offhand it was like 10 years ago when i was on a, a scat team and um but he said that and it made me think this guy likes his job and he comes to work and so when i sit down in front of the computer i'm like i'm here to work you know, I don't, I'm not here to just have the, the glory and all the good stuff of writing come just showered upon me because I didn't do anything. I don't like, like I've always said, I never want to win a lottery. People say, I want to win the lottery. I'm like, that's the worst fate imaginable to me because it's not repeatable. It's not scalable. You had no input on it at all. You just happen to some, some money randomly fell in your lap. Right. And so I think being successful at any endeavor, especially writing is much better and sometimes the harder it is to make it, the more valuable it is. Like we all know the one hit wonders in writing where they suddenly had, and I'll use Andy Weir because, you know. Oh um, yeah. It's a good, it's a good example. Because he did something he was very passionate about. It happened to become a best selling novel and he's had other successful books, but nothing compared to that first one. And my theory is with him and several people like him is he doesn't really know what happened, but if you struggle at it every day and you, and you, have a little bit more insight to all the steps along the way to then maybe it's something you can repeat and scale upward. The problem is with Andy Wears, I think there were several factors that went into the Martian becoming as big as it did. Um, 
I mean, obviously he had kind of a bigger fan base anyway when he started because he had the website and he did the serials and stuff like that. So he built his audience while he was writing the book. Um, I think Podium Publishing and, and uh, R.C. Bray had a huge hand in pushing it up um, because as soon as the audiobook launched, the sales took off again because, I mean, and even for Bray, that was his breakthrough thing. Um, yeah. uh, but it's, it's kind of like um, uh, Ernie Klein, too, who wrote um, uh, Ready Player One. Oh, right. I mean, yeah. Ready, Ready Player One was fun, and, and Ready Player One was not his first book, but it was a phenomenal book, well, it, and it and kicked it, off an entire genre of books. Yeah, it. Well, yeah, it it, it made it it made that genre like r extremely popular for where it was in, in a small corner. It became this big thing, but then he wrote the sequel, and and uh, it did well, but it mediocre well compared to compared Ready to Player Ready One. Player. Um, and so like, yeah, you look at that and you're like, wow, like have that kind of success and then to be smashed, uh, with every other, it's like JK Rowling and, and the Harry and, and writing anything that's not Harry Potter. Can you imagine writing? So seven books, she wrote seven books and anytime she wants to put her name on a different book, that's not Harry Potter. Millions of people are going to shout and scream at her because she didn't write a Harry Potter book. And yeah. like, and the show it could be the best whatever mech science fiction space whatever book and and potter. people would hate it because it's not harry potter like that that it doesn't terrify me because that's not going to happen to me <laughs> i'm gonna i'm gonna be pushing meteor to me mediocre books my whole career but I, i'll be able to write a whole crap ton and people can't just say oh he's the dude that wrote uh, Striker's War, or he's yeah. the dude that wrote Terra Nova or Valor or whatever. I'm gonna, Valor's my thing right now, but in two years, it's not going to be. It'll be something so, else. So taking what you just said, on switch gears. So like a lot of people that dream of writing when they're young, that recognition and acclaim. So how important is that to being a happy writer? And that's something you should, you should uh, seek. The recognition and acclaim of having that book that, cha that changes the world, kind of, so to speak. Uh, I, you know, it's a give and take. If I had that book, would I turn down the billion dollars that it made me? Absolutely <laughs> not. Like, there's no way. Um, but at the same time, as a writer, if I then put a second book out and everybody hates it, what does that do for me as a writer? Like, does that make me want to continue to try to write, or do I turn into uh, what's the the writer that wrote uh, to kill a mockingbird and then she didn't write another book for like 60 some odd years or something like that now she wrote the second book and it sold really well but still i yeah. mean I, like it's like you and walt said you have so many ideas that you want to write and there's there's so little time to cram all those books into the same thing and there's writers out there that make a billion dollars on the first book and then are handicapped to write the second one Yep. But at the same time, too, you have to manage your expectations about what yeah. that will do. I mean, yeah. um, look at, uh, uh, I think it's Stieg Larsson, the guy who wrote the Millennium Trilogy. Uh, right. uh, girl with the Dragon Tattoo. Girl. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. Can you die, though? Yeah, he, he passed away. Yep. yep. Uh, but, I mean, you know, his, his book sold like gangbusters, and he bought an island. He was like, I'm just going to buy an island and this, I'm going to put a shack on it and it's just going to be me and my wife. Um, that works. You know, I mean, but the other side of that too is, you know, if you become that author that uh, um, gets that that big band of notoriety, mm -hmm. um, make sure you, you've done some research on how to handle that because, you know, suddenly you go from somebody who's just writing books to someone who a lot of people are watching. You know, you have to be careful what you say, how you interact, what you what you put out there, because yeah. whatever that is could, could rebound back at you times 100, whether good or bad. You yeah. want to go get, uh, live on a boat and Stop writing for a while. <laughs> you know, on, a, on, a, on a smaller scale, you can look at um, getting book bubs or audio uh, yeah. daily deals because like, I got an audio daily deal on Valor. And before I got that, I had, I don't know, let's just say like 150 ratings. But the, the, the average was like 4.6. Well, now I have almost like 500 and something. And the average is like four because a whole bunch of people got it that didn't like it. Yeah, uh, so we, that we, that weren't that book's audience, but they got it just because yeah. of the deal. That's a big having your book 
go mainstream and go into what's not necessarily your core audience is always very dangerous. Yeah. 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 So, so I guess, I mean, it's, it, that was that question as far as how it pertained to being a, becoming a happy writer is kind of obvious is yes, it'd be really cool to be rich and famous, but if that's your only metric is I want people to acknowledge me as somebody who's brilliant, that's probably something you, you mean to strive for it. But if that's if that, if you hang your happiness on that happening, it's probably not a great metric. You better, better have some other things. Well, it's like what, um, it's like what, uh, uh, Gary Vaynerchuk preaches when he talks business and entrepreneurship is he, he loves the process and he, he doesn't care about the millions of dollars that he makes. He just loves the process. And so uh, as a writer and a lot of people, I actually had this conversation with the uh, CC KK the other day. We, he called me and we talked for about 40 minutes. Um, cool. But uh, I, I made my metric last year when I went full time to be, to make 60,000 in the year. And that was my metric. Uh, that was my cap or right. my, my minimum or whatever. And there was several people that came to me and said, why, why are you only aiming for 60 when you can aim for a hundred? I said, because if I aim for 60 and I make 62, then I've been, I've done awesome. If I aim for a hundred and make 62, it's been an abysmal failure and I don't need a hundred. I need 60. That's what I need to live. Um, and, uh, it's, it's, setting reasonable goals and then attaining them and then not like sh shooting for the million dollars, but actually just loving the process of writing and having fun writing what you're doing, even though, you know, it's not going to make a billion dollars, but it's going to make enough to pay your cell phone bill. Like I, that's where I'm in the, the state of mind right now is just like, I can do this project and this project. I know what's going to do here and here. And I can, I can have fun creating stories that I, that I like, and I don't have to write what anybody else wants. And I, I can just, I think that's why we're talking about this. What's so, because being happy in what you're doing is your superpower. Yeah. That, that's why you can write. Cause I had a, I started working on a, a, one of my old side projects a couple of weeks ago. And I, I remember I sat at my desk from like noon to like six 30 and my wife finally said, you need to come either eat dinner or tell us what you're doing. And, but I, <laughs> the, whole, the whole afternoon just, just, just disappeared. I mean, I'd like, I didn't get up for breaks and because I was just so having so much fun. So if you can harness that type of happiness and excitement and it, and if you're not, if you're going to go, if every part of your right, there'd be hard times in your writing where it's hard and it's grueling, but if it's that way every single day, then why not just have a regular day job? Because it'd be easy yeah. to make money. Yep. hundred percent, dude. hundred percent. So, I can't do you guys ever play that game uh, Skyrim, uh, the Elder Scrolls I Skyrim? I have not for two reasons. One, um, I, I I never have been into the Elder Scrolls world at all. Oh, and man. then two, I know how I play video games, and I know that I would be sucked into <laughs> the game because I've that's... heard other people being sucked into the game. Oh yeah, I mean that's that is that kind of experience is kind of what we hope to get as as writers is mm. sitting down at a table yeah. and saying i'm just gonna play for an hour <laughs> and then you play in this world of your imagination and and you start writing and uh, uh, you end up with this product on the page that as you're sitting there clacking keys you're like this is amazing i am oh my god i love this and you're slapping those keys and then somebody says either come to dinner or tell us what you're doing right i yeah. mean if that does if that's not a slogan you should be putting on a shirt right yeah exactly. then you're doing it wrong yeah, yeah. so that, then that that's that's the thing that can make it make it so amazing as a career for writing so i i don't want to be uh because with keystroke medium and all of our things we talk to a lot of writers and, and it, whether they're new or, or old and i want to encourage people but i see a lot of people i think are preying upon writers so and they come out and their message is always like um, write your life story and make a hundred thousand dollars a year without even trying i'm like that's dishonest and it's kind of mean and it doesn't. So I want to encourage people, but I also want people to know that it's not easy and it's, it's like anything else. You're going to get what you put into it. I agree. 100%. Skyrim is the reverse lit RPG. I, <laughs> I, can't, I, wish, I, I wish I could see, cause I don't, since I have this come kind of my low tech, I can't see everybody's name. That was uh, it was guy. 
I have both windows open so I can see who I saw, also saw, I saw um, uh, Tyler has a book bub coming up, so everybody should wish him good luck. Boom. Hit it. They're awesome. You know, this thing is you wish you could do it every day so you have that, that big spike. If there was a way, some marketing magic, or I think marketing is a lot of magic, but I think there should be like some 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 solid things that are, you know, like you do you do this much work and put this much money into it and you get this much back. And then you right. can your career on that. And I, and I haven't figured out how to quite how to do that, but it'd be neat if if we could do that and and uh, maximize our writing and and we could all go on a big trip someplace and meet up. That'd be awesome. <laughs> the keystroke Skyrim. retreat. Keystroke retreat. That'd be fantastic. Um, um, you know, I don't know. So I think we've covered a lot of this stuff about writing. We could talk all day on this, but for for me, it's just. I guess the, the reason I was thinking about this is I think, and I've went through this, I know Josh went through this recently is you remember why you're doing it. It would be a lot easier. Yeah. And, and although, so I don't know if you can hear my, my background noises back there. I'm waiting for people to come running past me. So. Now you're good. <laughs> Not a good deal. Yeah. We got a lot of action going on here in the morning with like 9,000 people living in the moon household. But... I tell you what makes my writing fun is the coffee. Coffee is pretty important. I love sitting with coffee, typing on the computer. Like in the mornings, I don't know that there's anything that beats it. No. <laughs> Everybody's like, you know, it's funny because everybody says write drunk and edit sober. And every time I try to write drunk, I fall asleep. Yeah. <laughs> like every time I'm like, oh, I got a couple beers. Let's go right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> How's that chair for the back? Uh, this chair is awesome. Um, it's uh, sometimes I lock it, sometimes I lean all the way back. But uh, no, I mean for when you fall asleep in the chair. Oh, uh, not very good at all. <laughs> that's why I have. That's why I have my futon. Oh, there you go. I can just go over there and sleep. The drunk stumble. Yeah, <laughs> got It's like a writing apartment. And you know what? Really, is? I've got my coffee. I've got my fish over there. I got my fridge over there. Yeah, yeah. I could stay in here all day if I didn't need to go to the bathroom. <laughs> well, Pretty soon, there's going to be a tube. <laughs> well, the bathroom's right through the wall, so I could like <laughs> drill, yeah, you like figure out some kind of suction method to. Yeah. There's always Gatorade bottles. <laughs> <laughs> And I only bring it up because I happen to know of a certain episode of podcasting where. Hey, I only know of one time in my life, and it was in the back seat of a Humvee where a Gatorade came into, a Gatorade bottle was used to much mm. goodness and relief. Mm -hmm. Because holy crap, awesome. my my staff sergeant wasn't stopping at all until we got <laughs> where we were going, and yeah. you should have went before we left. <laughs> that's what he said that's what he the, said. the worst is if you were the driver right and you had somebody up in the gun turret and he had to go or she had to go because i mean that action was going on oh, right yeah. by your ear you're like that, no, <laughs> no. <laughs> you better turn around bro <laughs> yeah i'm sure they're sure that they're they're yeah anyway um so what do you guys got planned for today we'll we'll start wrapping this up oh uh, let's see i'm gonna work on valor i've got hopefully it should go by fast all the chapters that i have now are written <laughs> so all i got to do is go through and make sure that they're fine uh hopefully i'm going to have this whole thing wrapped up this week and sent off and then uh then i'll have to deal with the copy edits when they come back and then we'll be done man then we'll be done sweet i'm gonna take a nap and then i'm gonna i'm gonna get a screen capture of josh where it says this should go fast <laughs> you go super fast super fast you have to work tonight well, me oh yeah oh yeah uh, I know, I yeah know I, i'm essential to. because in my alter ego as a not so mild mannered uh person who works in a giant warehouse full of beer the beer must flow the beer it must flow. It must. and we just got the i think this is the winning valor 
Urinal of Valor. Or Rick Bartlow, done with Valor. Done with Valor. Done with Valor. Oh yeah, sweet. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna do some some more writing, obviously, but I'm probably not gonna be able to get out of mowing the yard. And since I didn't get it done last week, I'm probably gonna have to actually bag it. So that's gonna eat a lot of. Money. Couldn't you just hook up the lawnmower with like a hitch and then just have the dog go out and run around the yard? My dog weighs like 15 pounds. So oh yeah, yeah. Cool. get like I'm a too. Womp yeah. womp womp. Womp womp. Cool. Well, hey, well, guys, thanks for hanging out with me. Um, I appreciate your patience and thanks for having us on. I want to do one thing real quick. I just like the idea that we get to hang out with meme Scott for 45 minutes. (laughs) I know meme Scott. So hold on one second. Just one second. Sorry. <laughs> now that I can do that, it's going to happen all just like just randomly drop the intro. You know, actually, yeah. we, we could do that. We could make some little. Blo- we could like pre-record our our, our um, ad reads for a keystroke and then just play them in the middle of the. That's true. The show. That's true. See, we we did we we did learn something useful out of this. So awesome, cool man. Well, uh, I'll see you guys all next time. See and uh, what we're doing tonight on keystroke. I have no idea. We'll figure okay. it out. All right. We'll see you. <laughs> All right. Later, everyone. See you. Cheers. Have some, have some writing. I got to hit the button. <laughs>